Hello and welcome to the Kansas City Star Soccer Bunker. Uh, I'm Charles Gooch. I'm the Full 90 blogger for the Kansas City Star and I'm joined by Sam McDowell, who is, amongst other things, the beat writer for Sporting Kansas City. Uh, we're here to talk about pretty much the most pressing topic uh, for Sporting Kansas City fans this week is uh, the injury of Ike Opara, um, who will miss I mean, pretty much the rest of the season after suffering a ruptured Achilles tendon against uh, Real Salt Lake uh, in a 0-0 draw this weekend. Uh, it's a tough luck for uh, Ike Opara, who missed almost all of last year as well uh, with, a, with an injury to his foot. This will be the sixth year in a row that Ike has not been able to play more than 18 games in a season. Um, but the more pressing issue as we move ahead to this weekend and, and beyond is how exactly is Sporting Kansas City going to replace Ike Opara? Um, now you were out at, at training this week talking to Peter Vermes, so you've got a little bit of idea. Who do you think is going to be next man up to replace Ike Opara? Yeah, and I think the – the, the part of that that we really need to address is, like you said, Sporting's not saying that he's out for the season, but they need to plan as if he's going to miss the season because that's probably going to be the case, you know, in, in which case you're not looking for a short-term fix. You're looking for a long-term solution, and that's why Peter said yesterday when I was out there that they're going to be looking to bring in someone from outside the current roster. And when you look down the line at what this team's going to be facing later this year, you know, Matt Beasler's playing tonight for, for the United States against Mexico, so we could probably assume that he's going to be called up for the Gold Cup later this year, in which case you might be able to get away with, you know, filling in a Kevin Ellis or an Eric Palmer Brown or Jaleel Anababa for short term, but what about when Matt Beasler leaves later this summer? Are you, are you comfortable, you know, playing both two of those three guys at one time? So that's going to be the issue. And, um, you know, I think the short term guy, you know, Saturday versus L.A., I think I would expect Kevin Ellis to be the guy there. You could shift Jalil Anababa inside. He's been playing on the right outside for the past four games. Uh, center back is his natural position, but I think that the more natural thing at this point is to, is to p play Kevin there. Uh, a lot of people are ready to see Eric Palmer Brown. Kid turns 18 in a couple weeks. Uh, I talked to Eric yesterday, and he said, you know, he came out of the the, the U20 camp, and he he still, you know, had a little bit of a foot issue there. He doesn't feel quite fit yet for this season. So I think that may prevent him from from being the guy because you don't want to sub center backs, you know, for no. 90 minutes. Yeah, you don't, you don't you don't want to do that. That's that's you want to make your sub uh, someone who can actually change the game, change the shape of your game, and changing on a center back is sort of uh, you know, a lot of coaches kind of feel it as a waste of a substitute. Um, the, the problem that I see, though, with Eric Palmer Brown is he's most likely going to miss, just like Matt Beezer is going to miss about a month with the U.S. Gold Cup team, uh, Eric Palmer Brown's likely going to miss about a month for the under-20 World Cup, Correct. which starts on May 30th. So, yeah, when you, when you say that you know, in the short term, Annie Baba and Ellis make the most sense, you're right, in the long term, they're, they're not just replacing Ike Opara, but they're going to have to find someone who can replace Ike Opara and Matt Beasler uh, mm -hmm. coming up a little bit. So it, those are the options internally. Now, you also, in your story that uh, was in this morning's paper uh, and on, on Kansas City Star yesterday, um, you talked about the Vermes is also going to look outside of this roster. Um, what sort of moves do you think that he could make at this juncture? The, the, the international transfer window for Major League Soccer is going to close pretty soon. We don't know exactly when because the MLS roster rules are a little bit squishy right now. But last year was May 12th. So they've got about a month where they can go get an international mm -hmm. player. Um, they could also bring in a loanee from down from the lower divisions or a trade in MLS. Which one do you think is the most likely? Vermees yesterday said he's going to look at all options, which in, in my opinion means he doesn't have something figured out quite yet. Because, I mean, they just learned of this news two days ago. Yeah. So I think that, uh, you know, they do have this partnership with Fluminense. I think that they'll explore avenues there to see if maybe they could bring in someone there for the season. And last year last year they had brought in uh, Igor, Igor Julial, yeah. who was from that club, and the, the, there was the thought that maybe he's coming back. Right. And that. I think Vermees is operating under the assumption that the transfer window is going to close around a similar time. He thinks maybe around May 11th. So that's obviously an option, but that's not a, that's not a cheap option. So that, you know, the fact that this is happening after the season has started, after they thought they were in a good spot on the back line, is going to make, you know, your options more limited because in the offseason more guys are available, more guys are looking for where they might play the following season. So that's going to sort of limit what they can do. You know, now all MLS teams also know that they need a guy there. So the price immediately goes up when you're looking as opposed to when you're looking for maybe a backup guy that during the offseason. So I think that's going to play into it as well. And, and there are not a lot of starting caliber uh, center backs that just grow on trees on the bench in, right in now, Major yeah. League Soccer. Um, well, thank you for joining us. We've been talking about Ike Parr, a little bit about the defense. Uh, I'm Charles Gooch. You can follow me at The Full 90. Uh, you can also go to Kansas City Star, uh, search for The Full 90 on the blog. Sam, where can they find you at? 
I'm on Twitter at Sam McDowell 11 and then uh, obviously on KansasCity.com slash SportingKC. All right. Thanks, guys.